that yeah. it looks like good. It We're good? is operating. It's good.
Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Love it. Those That's little cool. uh, those little ahs at the very end could probably use a little tuning. <laughs> but that's what happens when you play live. You go, okay, that's you know, that's what you got. <laughs> that's really true. You know, uh, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me just bring this up here for a minute. And um, this is my guest, Carl Verhan. Verhaian. Yeah, we're high in. But I, I answer to anything. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Uh, there's somebody already on YouTube saying it's Urs Wiesendunger. Always been a huge Carl Verheyen fan. Incredible tone and feel and a unique musical imprint. Oh, wow. Thank you. That's Thanks, cool. Urs. Yeah, really nice Thanks. to hear that. Yeah, already. Yeah. We're just getting um, started. He's probably the only guy though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I would I think a few more will join us. But <laughs> um yeah, that song was uh it was like it was a little country, but I heard a little steely Danish thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's a little bit there's a little bit in that bridge where um I use something I learned from George Benson. Oh. Which are which are octaves with a fifth in them, you know. So if you play E flat and E flat octave yeah. octave, you put a B flat in the middle. Oh. And uh, George Benson did that, and it's so cool the way he does it because he doesn't really care if some of the notes that are that middle note are non diatonic or even out of the key. I mean, so when I was doing that, I'm playing like there's a I get a B natural in there on a C minor chord, which is you know wrong. But yeah. it works. It works. It just works as a parallel thing, I guess. So that's cool. You have another comment already. Oh, yeah. People Rick commenting. Rick Coulty. Oh, yeah. See, he said he's a monster and he's off the leash. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. That's <laughs> nice of him. So. And hi, Mark. <laughs> Mark cool. Baldrige. OK, see, so at least three people are commenting so far. Good. So I am off the leash. That's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So um, Carl and I have known each other for years, but we haven't bumped into each other in years, except recently. And uh, yeah, we went to see um, Larry Goldings and Larry Coons in Westwood. That was a great concert. Such a great <laughs> show. Yeah. Just so, yeah. so creative and, and amazing, you know. And uh, yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen e either. La I didn't really know Larry Goldings, but I love that guy. I've always followed him kind of. Yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah, but I've known Larry Kuntz for years, and I have an interesting story. Um, his, I believe, his dad, yeah, who was Dave Kuntz, right? Great guitar, player. also a great guitar player, right? Yeah. So I, at, at age eighteen, I got a gig at the Sawmill Restaurant in Pasadena, <clears throat> singing, you know, Jackson Brown, Joni Mitchell, Van Morrison songs five nights a week. Yeah. And in, in um, you know, in the bar. And yeah. I actually got the gig when I was 17, but they wouldn't let me start till I turned 18, which was three months later. <laughs> so, so the guy, I came back three months later with my guitar case and he goes, yes, you're hired. So uh, he gave me Sundays and Mondays. And then he finally, then he moved me to the week, to the big time. It was the greatest gig because I'm living at home, making 75 bucks a night mm -hmm. and playing and singing stuff every night. So um, in comes this guy and I'm 99% sure it was Dave because yeah. he was the resident happening cat in Pasadena. Yeah. Yeah. And he goes, Hey kid, I like the way you play. If you ever want to get together sometime and jam. And I go, yeah, how about tomorrow? Cause I'm just a, you know, <laughs> sponge for information. So <clears throat> I've told this story way too many times. So to all the people that are listening or watching later, I apologize, but here's <laughs> what he did. Um, he pulls out, Let's see here. I got to show you. He pulls out a piece of music, you know, to read. So I show up at his house and he pulls out a piece of music. And the first chord on the music was, oh, here's a pig. First chord in the music was an F major seventh. You know, I go, oh, cool. I know that. The second chord was a, a D minor seven flat five. So I go, well, what the hell's that? So Here's a D minor seven. One, one, two, three, four, five. Flat five. Is this it? 
And Dave goes, well, yeah, you should figure it like that. Of course, this is a richer version. You could use the old string. This is a nice version with a flat five on top, but you could put it on the bottom, some kind of like the seventh on top or on the bottom. I personally think this is the cool voicing. Of course, this is the one they show you in all the chord books, but this one's nice because it's got the root on top. This is good too, but it's also an F minor six. So if you did that, then that means every, every F minor six will work. Well, anyway, he just says, you know, to four minutes of like mind exploding information because I've never even heard of that chord. Yeah. Now, we've been listening to songs like Penny Lane that have that chord in it or Todd Rundgren stuff or, you know, lots of lots of songs, pop songs had it, but I just didn't know what it was. I was a kid. And uh, so he just kind of like blew my mind to where like uh, it was like showing up at this wall and looking over the wall and going oh my god there's so much stuff i don't know and i thought i was really good i thought i could play stairway to heaven and crossroads and all this stuff wrong you know there's a <laughs> lot more out there and i i'm 90 percent sure it was dave Koontz that did that so larry being his son i have a special connection with <laughs> yeah that's really sweet yeah dave Koontz is such a sweetheart too and, yeah, so um, he's still around, huh? He is. He's still around. Oh man, I gotta, he's, I gotta look him up. Yeah, he's not playing, but he's still around. And um, he and Putter Smith are really good friends. You remember Putter? I sure do. Yeah. 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 So, great, great um, guys. yeah, those guys, they're some of the classic old guys, you know. Yeah, they've got to be in their eighties easily. They are. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I was 18 and he was an old guy by then. I mean, he was already probably in his 30s. So, yeah, wow, yeah. what a trip. <laughs> an old guy. Yeah. An old guy. <laughs> he was ancient. <laughs> so, um, so um, yeah, um, I'm curious. I mean, we had started briefly talking about something before we came on. Um, Carl was talking about my uh, sign for gratitude. And... Uh, it would be nice to talk about that for a minute. Yeah, this is a, an interesting thing because I was raised uh, Catholic and went to Catholic grade school and all boys Catholic high school. <laughs> and that was rough. It was rough to, 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 to go through a, a school that the whole focus was football and um, the entire music department was whatever I wanted to do. Like, <clears throat> let's get some guys together and play first Friday mass. And would you let us, you know, do that, you know, so there was no music. I think there is now at St. Francis. It was kind of on the border of La Cunada and Pasadena over that way. So, um, so, you know, you go through your life and you're trying to work on your spirituality and figure out, you know, what, what do I believe and, and, and where do I fit into it all? And my wife and I were talking about it yesterday on a walk. <clears throat> you know, we just, we were taking this walk down to this beautiful oak tree here in Topanga. And I just brought up some of these things that I think about. <clears throat> but when I saw your sign saying gratitude, it's sort of this morning ritual of mine that I, um, I just, I make two cappuccinos, one for Carol and one for me. And before she gets down to dr start drinking hers, I'm just sitting in this chair and I'm, it's almost a meditation, but I'm trying to be like a gratitude detective, like, what am I thankful for today? You know, what, what is it? And it could be, oh, what a great concert we had Saturday night. Or it could be, <clears throat> like I said, look at those beautiful leaves on that tree out that window, you know, or it could be that my cat just came up and sat right next to me. You know, it could be the simplest, dumbest stuff, you know, because it, you're always thanking God for, um, you know, your, your, your relationships and your good fortune and the, the fact that I have the best job in the world, <laughs> you know, and uh, so, so that, that, that gratitude is basically my religion. You know, um, I'm, I'm not somebody, I, I don't know if this is even cool to say it because I might alienate some of my own audience, but I'm not really a guy that worships, you know, a lot of my friends or family, especially family, they 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 are real worshipers. And I don't quite get that. It doesn't really work for me. I'm just thankful. I'm thankful. Yeah. Well, I talk about this stuff all the time. Oh boy, we need to we need to hang. <laughs> yeah. And I also every day I look at um, some person online 
Eckhart Tolle, Abraham, Muji, you know, some, some person who is speaking from a spiritual point of view. And I tend to like people who really speak normally, you know, just like, like we're talking right now with mm -hmm. words and ideas, mm -hmm. but those ideas are spiritual. Um, I was talking, my, uh, my friend is staying here, Calabria Foti. Do you know Calabria? Uh -uh. Okay. Beautiful name. Yeah. You, you know, Bob McChesney, the trombone player. Yeah. Yeah. That's his wife. Oh, really? Yeah. So she's visiting and she okay. and I are very good friends and yeah. very, we've always been on a spiritual, uh, you know, kind of communication Quest. together. Yeah. 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 And so, yeah, we were talking and, I mean, there's a lot of people have heard me talk a little bit about this before, but I'm for years, many, many years, I've I've thought about uh, that my known universe is my creation, and you know, kind of like quantum physics, sure. which says this is real right now, what we're experiencing. And nothing else is real at the moment. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Along those lines, you know, and I've I've gone deeply into that and I've pulled back out of so deeply and mm -hmm. I've had kind of miracles happen when I was deeply into it. Wow. And um, so, but I'm always thinking about that. And the of course, what we do is deeply connected to that because to me, um, I mean, I could say jazz is my religion or, or music or art, but for me personally, probably jazz, mm -hmm. you know, because when I do jazz, it's, it's something that I, um, I practice and mm -hmm. it brings me closer to God. Right. Yeah. So that's I can relate. I kind can of relate. a definition, right? I, I am a major... I'm a real serious practicer myself. I love to practice. And I think it's where I find my center as a person yeah. when I have that time to, 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 to be alone and work on my music, you know, yeah. and, uh, and not just the next set list that's coming, you know, cause yeah. I look at my calendar and I go, okay, what do I do next? All right, I'm doing this. All right. I better get all that together. More of a, I want to say cosmic, but it's more of a spiritual way of practicing where, <clears throat> I'll, I'll play lines in a key for the sheer joy of hearing it in the air. Nothing more. I'm not exploring anything. And if I'm in the key of B major, I'll fly up the guitar neck until I get to that D sharp. And then I'll think of it as this can be the seventh of F minor. And I'll come down in F minor or play a line in F minor. And then I'll end up on a C, the fifth, right? And I'll say, all right, I'm going to think of this as the... Um, the fourth of G major, and I'll play something in G major off that. And just let my mind go where it wants to go. Oftentimes, I find new things that I go, this doesn't sound like all my influences from <clears throat> Eric Clapton to Chet Atkins to Wes Montgomery to um, Jeff Beck to, you know, all the people I listened to, have listened to all my life. And this is me. This sounds like me. And th those are the things that I write down and keep a journal of um, for the last, I don't know, since the seventies, <laughs> I've got wow. a stack of what I call lick books. I got a stack about this tall of just musical ideas. This is great for D seventh. You know, this will be great. Now let's make it D minor. Now let's make it D major, fill up a whole page of ideas doing that. And then, so <clears throat> it's, it's, it's a, in a way, uh, almost like you're thinking like a spiritual way of practicing because we're both improvisers, you know, in one capacity or another. So yeah, yeah. That's, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. But I've also yeah. found that music as a, as a life's work <clears throat> um, has brought me the joy of knowing that I'm making people happy. Yeah. I got an email yesterday from a guy who goes, you know, I was going through a terrible divorce last summer when your record, your latest record came out and I listened to it every day day on my commute to yeah. Chicago and back to where he lived and he goes it just it just helped me get through it I go god oh. that's fantastic you know yeah that's great I've had I've had situations like that too sure. that have really been 
Oh, wow. And so cool to hear at the moment, too. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you, yeah, you're on yeah. a gig and you think no one's listening. It's a loud, noisy room. And a mother in the audience comes up and her kid is in the hospital dying of cancer. And she had to get away. And so she came yeah. to eat and it yeah. healed her. That's great. You know, I mean, yeah. you know, you never know. You just yeah, I think you and I are along the same lines of that, you know, that it, it's it's beyond a job and it's yeah. it's got a spiritual connection big time. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So. Um, Urs from uh, the first comment, he's he said, I'm from Switzerland. I wonder oh. if you could elaborate quickly on on your thoughts on the myth of sonic differences with amps using 220V or 110V? Sorry for the nerdy question. <laughs> <laughs> That's very nerdy, Urs. <laughs> I do know that there are certain amps that sound better in Europe. And I, uh, I'll tell you what, I, I own two vintage Vox AC30s because I'm a fan of George Harrison, of course. Um, and those amps, when I've the vintage ones that I've played in Europe sound even better. So I think they were made to get that punch and probably Marshalls and High Watts too. But uh, I don't know, my Marshalls and High Watts sound real good here too. So yeah, I do know that if you have a 120 transformer, it sounds better than if you have a 220 and tap off halfway. I do know that because <clears throat> I'm a guy that loves the Fender Princeton and amp. And I have four of them. There's two right here, and there's one over there, and there's one in the garage. <laughs> and they, one the one of them had a 220 transformer tapped off. I replaced that with a 120, a 240, or replace it with a 120, and it sounds much better. So that's one. That's the only thing I know about that. Is tapped off? Does that mean that it's kind of? Uh baffled in a way you know, what they mean is you've got a transformer's got all these windings of wire and yeah. if they go 200 and if they go say there's 240 of yeah. them they tap off at 120 but it's probably 5,000 and they tap off at 2,500 or something I have no idea it's that. like a limit tap off yeah is a limit. tap off is like they they uh take that wire and go out without going through the rest I, see. I think that's what it is but you know what I'm Speaking well out of my uh, comfort zone. Your here. nerdy range. Yeah, my nerd <laughs> range. Yeah, I do know that there's no flat nine. There's no flat nines on a major seventh chord unless you're Miles Davis. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did you hear that, Bob Bowman? Bob Bowman is here. Oh, cool. He said, "Oh, hey, Bob." <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Um, <laughs> so, um, okay. So now I know you're from California too. I didn't. I didn't know that. Born and raised, yeah. 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 And so is my mom and dad. They're both from oh. here. My grandmother was Mexican. She came from Juarez. Her name was Julieta Ortiz. Wow. So she so she married Herbert Stock Kolbush, a German. Oh. And then Brian is all is Dutch, you know, so <laughs> or, or 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 Flemish, you know, because I've been through the graveyard in Aachen, Germany, which is right next to Belgium, which is near Luxembourg and all that, that whole Flemish area. Yeah. The graveyard in Aachen, Germany had lots of Verheyens in it, a whole oh. row of them. Oh, wow. And then uh, Verheyen in the Amsterdam phone book is like Smith, there's a bunch of us. Oh, yeah. People. Yeah. And one time I was playing in this town, Antwerp, Be yeah, Antwerp, Antwerp. Belgium, yeah. And this guy comes up to me and goes, you know, the next village over from here, everybody's named Verheyen. <laughs> and he goes, my wife's maiden name is Verheyen. And oh, then, wow. then this kid, this 17-year-old comes up to me and goes, I just want you to know, my name is Carl Verheyen, and I play the guitar. And I go, oh. out, get out. There can only be one of us. And there's a famous Dutch uh, uh, Olympic skater named Carl Verheyen. Oh. <laughs> so... <laughs> So when you're Googling, yeah, yeah you, you come across uh, him. Yeah, you, yeah, find you him. better say Carl Verheyen, guitar, guitar player, player yeah. from Pasadena. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, let's see. There's so much. Uh, I mean, you have a really full and impressive bio. Oh, thank um, you. And I generally don't fully like research people's backgrounds because I like to have just a hang discovery right yeah yeah but um I mean anyone 
and I, I'm just telling you the, the truth. Anyone I mention your name to says, oh, yeah, he's a great guitar player. Oh, so that's you, nice. You really have, uh, you have really built up a beautiful, oh, uh, respectful you. career. Yeah. Oh, man, that makes me, you made my day, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So you're, over your career, um, do you, did you kind of build up slow to like uh, some of the heights that you've had, you know, playing with people and playing all over the world, et cetera? Um, or did you come up kind of fast or did, did it take a little time? What, I think what, it took time, up? yeah. I mean, yeah. I was... In my 20s, I was really a full-on jazz player. Uh -huh. you know, I mean, my teens and into around 2021, 20, I played rock and roll in Pasadena in a band. And we were friends with the Van Halen kids, and we played opposite them in various places. And then I, I, began, to, um, I began to learn that there's a lot more to music than just that. So I started studying jazz in a way that I put the blinders on. And all I wanted to do was practice eight hours a day and learn standards. And I was fortunate to hook up with Ronnie Eshte. Remember Ronnie? Sure. And, he, and I was in a band with his wife. So oh. Carol was her name. And we had gigs. I was living down in Newport Beach at the time. Because I, I met a girl at age 19 or 20, and she lived in uh, Massachusetts. So I picked up, left my gigs here because I was playing... <clears throat> these little, you know, restaurant kind of piano bar gigs with with a piano player and a drummer and stuff. And I moved to Massachusetts and went to Berkeley College of Music for one semester. Then I realized I'm out of here. A year later, I moved back and I settled in Newport Beach because there was some great jazz guys like Paul Krybik. Yeah, yeah. You know, Paul and sure. uh, Marshall Otwell yeah. and an old friend of mine, Peter Siebert, who passed away. Those guys... Those guys were all down there playing jazz. And so I just jumped into that scene and it would be like practice all day, play all night. You know, it was really a great period of about five years. Yeah. And then I realized I'm kind of the big fish in the small pond. I was getting all the recording sessions down there. There weren't a lot of other like studio guys that could, do, you know, I was starting to do studio work a little bit. So I moved up to um, North Hollywood as you do. And I had a as you friend. do. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> you that's must. Pretty, yeah. That's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> as you do, you know, as we do. you move right into North Hollywood. So <laughs> my good friend, Dave Murata, who was who's still in my band, you know, um, and John oh. Ferraro, John Ferraro, they were living together. And I moved in around the corner, <clears throat> started to get a little bit of studio work and, you know, entry level stuff. I was doing I was doing Laverne and Shirley and Happy Days and a few jingles, you know, these TV shows and then uh, occasional record dates and stuff. And one day I was down in um, Santa Monica area at a weird little studio doing a record for a female vocalist that I don't even remember her name. But there was an English guy as the engineer. And we hit it off. I, he liked my sounds and I liked the sounds he was getting. So we changed, exchanged numbers. Went home that night, that day. And then that night at about 9.30, I get this call from a guy. He was so British, he could barely speak at all. <laughs> His name was Norman <laughs> Hall. Norman oh. Hall. But it sounded like Norman Hall. <laughs> he told me that Super Tramp was auditioning guitar players and they've already heard 18 people. And this English chap that was his. Excuse me, did you know him? Never met him. So just he out just of the blue, him. I get a phone call. But he had talked to his buddy, his mate, as there was. Yes. This British guy that I'd done a session with that day. So, oh. yeah, what are you doing? We're looking for guitar players. Oh, I heard a guy today. So I went down there. The next morning, and I, you know, this is well before YouTube. This is 1985. Yeah. I said to guys, I said, guys, you know, I'm really sorry. I don't know any of your music, and I didn't have a chance to learn it because it was a 10 a.m. audition. Uh -huh. And they go, we don't want to play any of our bloody songs. Let's play the blues. So we played the blues, you know, a few tunes. I just jumped in when I, when I knew what key it was. Then they said, you, can you sing something? And I sang... I sang Willie and the Hand Jive. I don't know why that came to me. You know that one? 
Yeah, that was a cat cool named Way Out Willie. <laughs> cool little chick named Rock and Millie. Anyway, I sang that and had no idea. The next guy coming in was Buzzy Feeton, which was scary because he was my hero. I love Buzz Feeton's playing. And anyway, I got home and they called me that night and said I got the gig with Supertramp. But I was a side man. I was hired as a side man with a weekly salary. And it was um you know, I'll just fast forward because we did a few tours, Europe and America, North America and everything and came off that. And I was just playing, doing sessions around L.A. and stuff. And then fast. Well, I started making my own records in 87, 88. And then I made one in 94 and then one in 96. And uh, but they they um, they made me a fold on member in 1996. Oh, really? Was. Yeah, they made me a band member. Oh, which much better. So, how sharing. long had you been playing before they did? I, I'd been in it. I'd been in it for about ten years, and then it was it was a really it was really f cool thing. They they were kind of waiting for their A and M Records contract to expire because okay. A and M was all about Janet Jackson at that period, and they didn't care about old bit old Super Tramp, right? Even though Super Tramp had sold twenty million copies of Breakfast in America and had the yeah. biggest ever live record, double live record ever called Paris, live in Paris. Wow. So they were a big deal, but you know, this kind of moving. So they waited till that contract expired and then signed with EMI. <laughs> and that's when I became a member. So, um, but all that time, I, you know, you just have to have your own music. <laughs> Cause I look at like, I look at it like this, you know, you can be, you can have these various careers, you know, going on for me, super tramp, was a wonderful career, especially when I became a member, but it's still working towards the musical vision of the leader of the band and the songwriter, main songwriter guy. And although I totally respected Rick Davies, you know, I love his soulfulness and, uh, you know, they have kind of this almost like English dance hall tradition that's combined with, you know, Horace Silver and Ray Charles. It's just really an interesting thing and a little bit of prog mixed in, you know, so... But that's one career. And then being a studio musician all this time was another career where you're basically the well-listened craftsman. You know, you're you're coming into a session going, okay, what do they need? Okay, they need me to sound like ZZ Top. Okay, that's cool. Because I love Billy Gibbons. He plays a Les Paul through a champ amp. He gets those little pinch harmonics. He's got the Texas shuffle, which is different than the Chicago <laughs> shuffle. Got it. <laughs> Here, let me give you a... Let me give you a glass of water. <laughs> Same glasses. Yeah. Oh, man. Crate and barrel. <laughs> <laughs> I think these were... I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, anyway. So being a studio musician is that career, and being a member of Supertramp is that career, or any band like that. But having my own having my own band was, you know, the primary focus of, of everything, because... That way I can music I can make music sound the way I want it to. And um I had a teacher who said your your ultimate goal should be to make music sound different. <laughs> he said, listen to Herbie Hancock, he makes music sound different. <laughs> you know, listen to Van Halen, listen to uh listen to um you know, anybody, anybody that you admire. That's they why you music. like them, yeah. Because yeah. they're they're unique. They're unique. So that's your goal is to make music sound different. So Anyway, so I've always had my own band and through the years just started making records. And then I got signed on a label in Europe. But the one provision was you have to tour here. Mm -hmm. So in 97, which was 26 years ago, right? Yeah, I started I started touring in Europe a lot, you know, and um, it, it's funny because it's easier for me to tour in Europe than it is in the States. The distances are so far. <laughs> So it's rough. So <laughs> I know. Um, what was I going to ask you? Yeah. Um, so the music, your music. Let's say your music, your thing. Is it? Do you, is it in a category? You know, that's a music good question. Genre? It it's it's kind of the first album and a half were sort of fusiony. You know, jazz fusiony type stuff. And uh, yeah. then I introduced 
more vocals into it and then um a little bit more of a bluesy vibe into it so you know it's always going to be based around i mean improvising is a number one element in there um also there's a certain accessibility factor you know i i don't want my concerts to be all spotty herbert spotty herberts you know dudes you know and um <laughs> you know there's 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 people that my wife will come and listen to but she's not ready she really doesn't need a second set of it you know what i mean yeah you know, she'll, she'll dig the whole first set like for instance when we went and saw larry and larry yeah larry coons and larry goldings she loved every minute of that. That was amazing. It was it was gorgeous and it was, oh, it, was it was very it was, entertaining. It was inspiring and entertaining. And and you you went away there seeing like you'd really seen something artistic, you know. So but there are guys that are shredders that she just doesn't want to hear a second set of, you know, and uh, I won't mention any names because they're friends. <laughs> but so I also find that it with with my own music, I also find that. I'm not a very good singer, but I just love to sing. I just love it. <laughs> and um, it's just it's just fulfilling for me, satisfying. And so I like vocal songs. I like songs with vocals more than instrumentals, <laughs> you know, for well, my own. It mixes it up. I mean, it, yeah. it, talk about accessibility, you know. Yeah, exactly. Even just a little bit of vocals. Like I yeah. went to see Todd Hunter yesterday at the Urban Press. And, you know, he's a beautiful piano player. And, I mean, he can carry a tune, but I wouldn't call him a singer. But what he did, he has hooked it up, uh, his uh, vocal, he's hooked hooked it up to kind of a, you know, one of those electronic oh, yeah. kind of things. And so now he can, he can sing and yeah. sound kind of cool, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> and yeah. it's separate from his piano playing, really. I mean, yeah. he'll... He'll be kind of soloing with his singing and then then he'll solo with his piano playing. So <clears throat> but I think it just adds another Yeah. I mean one of my heroes is Joe Zawinul, right? And yeah, on his towards the end of his, you know, after post weather report stuff, he put yeah. out an album called uh World Tour. And if you can ever find the double album of it, because I think in the States they re released it just a single album. He's got that vocorder thing hooked up to where you yeah. can go and it's almost like African words yes. that are, yes. but he's playing them. So they're outrageous <laughs> melodies, you know, and it just, yeah, that's a cool me sound. On. It yeah, turns me on. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Um, by the way, Rick Coolty, whatever, however you pronounce his name. Sorry, Rick. Mm -hmm. uh, he, I'm not sure what he means by this, but <laughs> he said, Carl is in the stealing gas category. Oh, I have a tune called Stealing Gasoline. <laughs> and uh, it's a true story that goes, uh, you know, like. Uh... I'm sorry, I can't actually hear you playing. Oh, you can't hear that. Yeah. You know, there's a thing where you can you can turn on uh, music, but I won't bore you with it. Original sounds for musicians on. There we go. That makes it better. <laughs> anyway, it's a true story about how I used to have a Volkswagen bus when I was a kid. Yeah. And I was a huge fan of this guy named Jesse Colin Young. Yeah. He was in the Young Bloods. Sure. I was it's such a fan that at 17 yeah. years old, I wrote him a letter and said, I know all your songs. I know all the Young Bloods songs. I would love to join your band. I mean, still in high school. I would love to be the guitar player in your band. Please, 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 you know, whatever. He wrote me back a postcard <laughs> and I have it. Oh. Um, Check this out. Here oh, it cute, is. Man. That's Jesse Colin Young, my hero. And there's there's his writing. He writes me back and says, um, you know, I choose to do all the guitar playing myself and I just hired a sax player and whatever. <laughs> but just recently he did a thing at the Grammy Museum and I went to that. And then the next day he did a, 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 a radio interview and I got invited as a VIP by somebody and I met him and I showed him the postcard. He's like 80 now. Oh, but, but stealing uh, gasoline. Um, I used to take my Volkswagen bus after school at P Pasadena City College at three in the afternoon and say, you know what? I'm going to drive to San Francisco now and just because he's playing at the boarding house or, you know, maybe it was somebody like the Grateful Dead or some of those bands up there. 
So I would just head out like, mom, I'm not coming home. I'm going to go to San Francisco. And I might run out of gas in one of those little towns, have the 101, right? And uh, they'd be closed. So one time I had to like pull off on this little town called San Ardo and there was a tow truck with a gas can on the back and I just, you know, filled myself up and kept rolling. Stole, <laughs> I stole gasoline, so I don't recommend it. <laughs> How cute, man. True story, yeah, so. <laughs> so. That's, that's really cute. <laughs> so, um, so nowadays, <clears throat> So nowadays, what what's what are your days like? What is what what that's are you a, doing with yourself? That's a great question. Well, <clears throat> I'm just a, a week from Wednesday. I head out. No, two weeks from Wednesday, I head out to Europe for a ten. I mean, a five week tour oh. with my band, and it's right. the same band in that video. So it's Troy Dexter on piano, a keyboards and guitar, and we got him singing a little bit. I also hire his wife, Holly Dexter, as a background vocalist. And I'm, sh I'm throwing her a little bit more meat every tour, you know, like, why don't you just sing the whole first verse and then I'll sing the chorus in the second verse, you know, or something like that. And then Dave Murata's playing bass back in it. He was in it for years and years and he was out of it for about five or six years where Cliff Hugo played bass. Remember Cliff him? Hugo, yeah. Love Cliffy, yeah. <laughs> we're, still, we're still in touch. He lives up near my sister in Sonoma. And then this drummer I've been using for quite a while now is John Mater. <clears throat> Who is it? John Mater. He's a wonderful drummer um, because he's playing drums and shaking things and playing a conga and timbali. And he's all over the place percussion wise. And for two years, he's been taking vocal lessons. Oh. So he's, he and Holly are my real principal background vocalist, which is great. It opens up a lot more of my catalog, because I think I have 17 albums out, which is ridiculous, you know. Nice, congratulations. So there's been, when I was a trio, it was only a handful of this stuff on each record that would work, right? So now that I have keyboards and, and vocals, you know, we can do much more. And um, that's fun, that's just a, a fun. So five weeks, where are you going? Well, it's easier to list where we're not going. We're going to go to Germany, Austria, Switzerland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Belgium, Luxembourg, Italy. Wow. And I think that was it. That was And then as the as the jazz joke says, and then on the next night. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> night two, right. Yeah. So then we come back and we do a West Coast run up to Seattle. And oh, we cool. end up we end at the at the Mount at the Lincoln Theater in Mount Vernon. Washington, which is all the way up there. So, so you're going to be in L.A.? Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, probably just the baked potato at this point. Um, what I try to do with L.A., like we played the Thousand Oaks Performing Arts Center, the small, the, the sheer forum. That's a 400-seater. Um, and so I had to kind of not play in L.A. for three months so that I could fill that place. Yeah. And we did. We, we had like 360 seats which was good pretty good right and then, yeah and then um <laughs> let's see where else uh i just played down in newport beach at a new club called campus jacks oh yeah that's uh yeah that's been yeah i've been happening for a while yeah yeah i didn't know about it but they just booked me and we sold we sold it out 300 seats wow so, that's so that was cool good. so yeah so I'm, I'm trying to like make sure that i don't overplay la even though i really want to play and want to do it, you know. Yeah, so I hear you. I hear you. You just you just can't keep like I couldn't play the baked potato in the two months leading up to the, um, yeah, the Thousand Oaks place because you don't want people to look at oh my god sixty dollar tickets I'll just go see them at the Spud second show for thirty five. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, when will you be at the baked potato? Do so you that know? will probably be uh, that looks like it's because uh, I'm I'm at the Buck Owens Crystal Palace in Bakersfield. <laughs> on uh, the 13th of June, and we'll do the baked potato on the 14th. So Cool, okay. So my tour manager can just <laughs> drive straight there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Um, okay, I have a friend, Roland, who's into uh, <clears throat> Zappa, and he oh, always wow. asks Zappa questions from the guests. So 
Here's this Zappa question. Are you into peppering time signature changes in your music a la Zappa? <laughs> well, you know, I just played with my dear friend Chad Wackerman on Saturday night, and it's his birthday. Oh. So <clears throat> I'll, I'll give a, my, my answer to that question is not really, but I realize that odd time signatures are one of my weaknesses. And so I work on it. I'm really good at four, I'm really good at three, and I'm really good at six. So <laughs> one thing I did, and it, it, tell me if this is not coming through or not, but one thing I did recently is I taught myself how to play um, Seven Days by Sting, which is Monday, I can't wait till Tuesday, till I make up my mind. Sunday be too late. You know, anyway, I said, I'm going to learn how to play and sing a song in five. And, uh, and uh, the reason I brought up Chad is because he worked with, um, he worked with Frank for many years. And uh, we played together at Alva's showroom down yeah. there in San Pedro yeah. with this band I have called the Crank Tones, which is two drummers, Chad and John Ferraro. <clears throat> Jim Cox on B3, two guitar players, me and a friend named Craig Copeland, and a bass player named Tom Child. And we've had this band since the 80s. We only play twice a year. We do like our tax time gig and we do a Christmas show. So, <laughs> But uh, I learned how to do that and taught it to the guys at a rehearsal and we did it the other night. So and we pulled it off. So I'm getting there. It, it, you know, but uh, I did get to meet Frank Zappa one time, which was cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was an interesting character for sure, but uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That stuff with metric modulation, I need to try that in my show. And what that is is if you're playing along in four four, like so those are eighth notes. One, two, three, four. Then you make it. The triplets become the eighth notes in the next song. Uh, and so the whole thing changes tempos because of what they call metric modulation. Or, or you could dot 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 you could dot 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 That's your note. Oh yeah, that's cool. It is. It's really yeah. Frank did entire shows like that where he would each tune would have a. Some of them were probably really hard, like five against four to get into the new tempo, which is going to slow it down, you know, or speed it up or something. It's so. good. It's kind of like the weather report thing, which I always thought was fabulous, where the the song stops mm -hmm. and it could be over, but it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It I stops know. for like, I don't know how many bars, two, four, yeah, something nice. like that. And then comes back in man yeah, what know. a rush that I is know, I mean, yeah. wow i took alfonso <laughs> johnson and chad wackerman on the road two tours ago oh. uh, just wanted to do something different and i thought let's just do this and it was it was just really cool we did it we did about a month together mm -hmm. and alfonso has a lot of great weather report stories so yeah yeah so, love that. Um, so, and uh, this may be a dumb question. Do you have a manager and a booker person? Is that how you... I got booking people, you know, I got yeah. booking people. Um, <clears throat> one, one European guy that coordinates the UK and Italy and does the rest. Um, and then I've just kind of signed with somebody new here, um, but in the States. But so far, nothing's happened yet. But we're, we're I'm waiting to... Give them the benefit of the doubt and see what they. So you don't have you you don't have to do it yourself. Not too much, yeah. I mean, there are gigs like we do Yoshi's every year, you know, up in yeah. Oakland. Yeah. I have my agent do that because it's 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 better. Yeah. Have him do that, but uh, I can do some of it myself, and um, you know, I was yeah, I would I would love to have a really good U.S. agent, and believe it or not, I'm not opposed to doing casinos, you know, because the the hotel's upstairs, the food's good, and um, the pay is usually really good. I've done a few. And, uh, you know, yeah, like Supertramp, I say, come on, guys, let's do a residency in Vegas. They go, no, that's, that's, <laughs> that's too much. 
<laughs> yeah, that's not rock and roll. And I go, I mean, Sting plays there and Elton John <laughs> plays there and Brian <laughs> Adams plays there. And so, you know, it's crazy. So uh let's see roland says i believe the dead did a thing like metric modulation on their first album where a long guitar solo goes through it in a fabulous way probably the, the dead were amazing yeah it's, it's it's interesting if you get it if you get it with the dead you know you're a fan you know and a lot of people just don't get it but i get it i get it i know i believe they had a real high period around 73 to 76 so you know yeah. that period. they were really good they weren't real druggies and stuff but that I heard was the really, time i, I heard was a listening. really good interview the other day there was jerry garcia and bob weir right and yeah. somebody said to them has has success spoiled you <laughs> <laughs> and Jerry Garcia says, oh, definitely. You know, has success changed you in any way? He goes, definitely. And he goes, how about you, Bob? And he goes, well, you know, when you, you're having pistachios and there's those ones that don't open, he goes, yeah, I just throw those out now. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. I was definitely a deadhead in college. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that, those go, were the years, you, actually. Did you, did you go see them? Oh, yeah. Yeah, me too. Oh, yeah, I had spiritual experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I saw him two or three times back in those days and it was pretty pretty wild, pretty amazing. Amazing. So. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, that's in my DNA now. You know, I mean yeah. I you know, you have these moments, right? These these mm -hmm. I mean everything's present time, right? Right. There you go. So yeah, so you know, like this conversation, you're adding into my DNA. You know, nice. And, and, you're, and yours into on. mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the dead definitely are in my DNA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure me too. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, they say this really interesting thing about us guitar players. Notice this thing about Jerry Garcia. He has the same sound on acoustic and electric. It, oh. it, 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 it's his same sound that he produces. It's pretty amazing. The guy is the guy was pretty special, and his pedal steel playing and banjo and everything else he could do. So he's incredible, yeah. great, 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 great stuff. Yeah. Um, and their um, ampli <laughs> amplifiers, right from floor yeah. to ceiling. Oh, that the wall with, of sound thing, yeah, with just like a beautiful sound, like like yeah. we're using Crystal. right now. Crystal yeah. clear, I know, yeah, amazing, yeah. That's kind yeah. of that's a whole amazing thing that they yeah. did. Well, getting back to when you asked me what I do with my day, I, I definitely practice every day. I look at the next set list coming and I try to be as fluent as I can with that. But I also work on new stuff, new ideas, um, or even take a song that I already do and say, you know, I was playing an F sharp minor the other night and I just kind of ran out of ideas. I need to come up with some new, some new stuff, new ideas that, that can be weaved into what I do. Yeah. But lately I've been doing vocal practice and um, uh, I've been taking these vocal lessons from a guy who gave me the, the bunch of exercises. And so I do those and that takes only about 10, 10 or 12 minutes. And then I have a file on my studio computer of just lyrics of songs that I'll probably never perform live, but they stretch my voice and they work me, my, they work that range where I could use help and um, and I just, I just, I just do a handful of those tunes and just uh, sing them and try to place those vowels where they need. I mean, you're a vocal teacher, so you know what I'm talking about. So I work on that too, and and try to give that a good hour a day as well. It's been it's been really fun and helpful. Yeah, so. I'm reading this old book that I had from from college actually, mm -hmm. a book by a man named Alan Green called The New Voice. And um, yeah, it's, <laughs> he, he kind of reiterates that the voice is the only instrument that you have to build mm -hmm. and then use. Yeah. You know, you don't like guitar, it's built. I mean, you're, yeah, yeah. you're changing the sound, but you're using yeah. it. Yeah. But the voice, you actually have to build. The voice is a very... Yeah, yeah. Challenging instrument. It's really and it's not the same every day. That's one weird thing. Yeah. About your personal health, you know. Some days you wake up and go, "Oh my God, I'm crystal clear today." Yeah. Yeah. I got this, you know. I I told my teacher, I said, "Here's here's what I want to be able to do." I may not always love you, as long as there are stars. 
stars above you You may not need to doubt it I'll make you so sure about it I said, I want to be able to get that note Sure He goes, you got that You just yeah. have to remodel some stuff He goes, you, you need know, a little I'll, remodel I'll also share something with you That I personally, after all these years of singing Again, everything's in the moment, right? doesn't matter what you did 10 years ago now yeah. you're here mm -hmm. so what's happening now like you said every day you wake up it's different mm -hmm. however for that kind of thing <clears throat> there is uh, it's hard to describe but there is a, a focus uh that tr try it out for yourself okay you focus on the note and it's not entirely there because there's a little bit of um, body attention on how you're training to support and everything mm -hmm. right but there's a big flashlight on the note itself in your head Pop! you know so For that sure. note you're actually experiment with that i just got a kathy siegel garcia voice lesson and I very much appreciate it <laughs> because those it's, are the those are the kind of thoughts that yeah. you need to you know yeah. and, and and it's interesting because uh I, I apply that to the guitar already you know oh I yeah that. I already apply apply that with 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 my lines and stuff you know knowing knowing where I need to be and what I need to what I need to hit and stuff like that so it's a very interesting mm -hmm. perspective it's yeah. uh it's very spiritual mm -hmm. you know it's hard to describe it it's uh yeah but it's it's uh it's very it works i i believe things like that i remember mm -hmm. when i you know would work on com the idea of communicating mm -hmm. you know and that idea actually that idea i i actually wrote this little book during the pandemic oh wow of um, these concepts that I had over the years uh, that the same lesson idea, you know, that like we're talking about these ideas that work, mm -hmm. uh, let's say voice technique, it actually applied to singing jazz mm -hmm. and it applied to life. Wow. So I wrote this little book I and uh, yeah, I should send it to you. I'll, I'll make a note to send it to you. But um, uh, yeah, so that kind of thing, you're like your guitar, right? You said you have that point of view already, or you've right. used that point of view. Yeah. So for singing, it yeah. actually. <clears throat> and there's, there's this. This is also important. The the confidence level. You know, yeah. and I yeah. think if you could shine that light on the note you want to sing and try to focus on it, the, you'll build the confidence that you can do it. Yeah. So, yeah, practice, right? Yeah. Whatever you practice gets stronger. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so so, there it is. Hey, so let's good. listen to something again. So I, um, the first one, uh, I guess that was electric chair. Was that electric it? chair? Yeah. It's so a, there's, I have Spike yeah. and Kaningi. Kaningi, yeah, that, that's Kaningi. an instrumental if you want to play that one. Sure. Okay, I'm going to view all files. Kaningi, where am I? Uh, you you, you know who um, Joel Gilberto is, right? Absolutely. So, so he, so he, I've, I've been a huge fan, so I've got one of his records, and he sings, you know, it's in Portuguese. Yeah. You know, and you know how he kind of has an Elmer Fudd kind of a voice, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> At one point, he's singing along on this record that I've been listening to since the 70s, and he goes, Kaningi. And oh. I just, <laughs> that's a great word, Kaningi. And we adapted it, my wife and my friends and I, it means my Kaningis. My Kaningis are a little cold, you know? <laughs> and so I called this song Kaningi, but I found out it's an African language. Oh. Too. <laughs> But I'm That's sure in right. Portuguese it's something else, you know. Well, Bra the Brazilian language is actually a mixture of a mixture mm -hmm. of a whole bunch of languages. Yeah. So yeah. that's not surprising that the, yeah. it's a, there's an African word in there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here's Kaningi, Kaningi right? Mm -hmm. That's how you're pronouncing it. Let's see.
Sounds like metric modulation. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was just going to say that. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I thought there was a drum solo in this one. <clears throat> this, this takes place at the Triple Door in Seattle. Ah. And we play there every year and sell it out. It's a nice big room. Huh. This drummer, John Mater's done a lot of stuff. Like, he was the guy doing Hamilton. Oh. Down here. And he's from Oakland area, so he did a bunch of plays and a bunch of musicals up there. Yeah. And moved down here to do Hamilton and, and uh, so yeah he's, he's local now yeah uh, Altadena oh cool I'm sure everybody loved that. Man. That was fun, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Got to throw the drummer some meat every once in a while. That's a Frank Zappa term, by the way. When you, get, <laughs> when you give a guy in your band a solo, it's throwing him some meat. Oh. <laughs> it's, like, it's like he's a tiger in a cage, you know. <laughs> okay, let's see. Is that an Epiphone SG that you're playing on that song? No, it's a 1966 Gibson SG. There you yeah. go, Roland. Yeah, love that old thing. Okay, and here's uh, some Taylor Hatch questions. He's a guitarist studying at UNT. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> what are some things that you've just discovered on the guitar that has surprised you? Any specific chords or types of ways on playing on the neck? Wow, I'd have to give that a little bit of thought. <laughs> uh, People always say that when I ask Taylor, yeah, yeah. Taylor questions. Um, that's, wow, that's a good one, huh? New things that I've discovered lately. I mean, I'm always discovering things, but I'm just trying to think of something blockbuster monumental that, yeah. would, be, that would be cool, you know? Um, just uh, maybe, maybe some, uh, some, yeah, here's one. I have discovered that I can put open strings into any of my musical lines and yeah. use it to uh, gain range and real estate. So it, on this acoustic guitar here, I can show you that if I'm playing in C sharp minor, I can go. And what I did was I got down to a G sharp and played an open G. So I had that chromatic thing. So, so that's one, but it also works going up. So I use an open string to jump positions. And that's 
So I've always done it. I mean, I've been doing that for many, many years, but I've discovered that there's really no keys where it doesn't work. You know, it works in every key. You know, I used to think, okay, I could use the G string in the following keys, the B string in the following keys, the E strings. Now I can, I've got it figured out everywhere, major, minor, and dominant. So that's kind of a recent discovery. I just opened that door and went, wow, look at all this. And it was, yeah. it's cool. <clears throat> And that's um, and that's part of that kind of practicing we were talking about earlier, where you just yeah. you try new things and you go, oh look at, yeah, what the D natural would work perfectly in the key of A flat seven because it's the flat five, and so you can get a real gnarly, you know, open D flat, open D, and then go to a D flat, you know. Anyway, yeah, stuff. Yeah, <clears throat> um, he has several questions, but one question is. Um... If there's anything you could say about the music industry now and how it could be better, what do you think could be could change or be emphasized more? <clears throat> well, I believe that there's this new bill before Congress that could really help us out. And that is that the streaming companies give us one cent for a stream instead of point zero 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 one six. You know, if we got a cent per stream, you could almost have a living wage if, if you're out there working and doing it. So n not quite, but at least you'd be able to make another yeah. record from the sales of the last record. I don't even know how they can, I, I, you know, um, explain why mm -hmm. they give us point zero 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 one. Yeah. I don't yeah. even know how they can explain that possibly. Well, it's really interesting. One of the guys that used to be a, super, a manager of Supertramp, he um, works for Spotify now. And I had a chat with him about 10 years ago saying, he goes, let's look at you. Wow, you had 87,500 streams of this one song this month. And I go, great. So what's that going to amount to? Well, at the end of the year, you know, it didn't even come to 20, 20 bucks for the end of the year. The quarterly was about $4.13. And, and I go, that, that will never pay for me making another record unless I can sell some physical product at, CD, at you know, CDs and vinyl at shows. But we did a show not too long ago where I sold about six CDs and six hundred dollars worth of T-shirts. <laughs> so I'm going. Okay, they'll buy my, you know, clothing, but, but not my music. What's that all about? It's because they go home and stream it. You know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Wow. That's so there's really good wild. and bad. I mean, there's people in South Africa that are now fans of mine that never would have been. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And um, I, I was playing. I'm gonna go play. Um, you know, Albert Lee, the yeah. guitar player. So Albert and I are going to play the Ullapool Guitar Festival together in Scotland. And this will be my fourth time doing that. And it's just remote way up there. And it's fantastic. You know, there's all these amazing guitar players that come together from Dresden, Germany and Italy and California. Right. And this lady comes to me and goes, I'm a huge fan of yours. And I live in the Outer Hebrides. <laughs> now I've heard that, but I don't know where that is. Well, it's it's if you if you're in Western Scotland and you just go out, you know, to the west, way way out there, it's like desolate, barren. And we go, you guys, you guys have CD players, you know, you guys have vinyl, <laughs> you guys have electricity. So, <laughs> anyway, she goes, yeah, I'm a huge fan. And she gave me a gift, which was a um a wallet <laughs> made of Shetland pony fur, as you do. <laughs> so, that's wild anyway, does your anyway. wife come on your trips she's going to come on the next one yeah um she's comes up comes on a few she's she's an old she's a uh she used to be an art historian well an art she used to work at the huntington right as an oh. art preparator and conservator then she was at the getty for a while then she was at the brand library the music and art library then she's retired <clears throat> so now she can come more she's been retired for a couple of years so she'll she'll come out with for for a while, you know. This time she goes, "Are you staying at any spa hotels?" <laughs> so, okay, now I know. Yeah, but she's a real loyal fan, you know. And when we play up and down the coast, she's my merchandise engineer. Ah, so, that's worth the, her weight in gold, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, anyway, you <laughs> yeah, met her the other night at the Larry Larry thing. I did. 
Yeah, I only, uh, really, I almost only keep my CDs for Japan because I, really? I can sell at least 50 in Japan. Mm -hmm. So, um, and this time my, I'm going to Japan in May and then Korea where the gigs are actually building. So I'm think I'm wondering how many CDs do I have to bring on the road this time, you know, so. <laughs> it's, yeah. Because if you send them there, you know, you pay duty and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I know. Oh, when, I for mean, Europe, I have a maid there. I have oh. a, batch, a batch made there, you know, like 500 or something. And then oh. try to, you know, so we've always got, we've always got them there. So, because if I take them over, yeah, you're busted, you know. Yeah. If, if you send them over, if you can get them, if you can take them in a suitcase and the suitcase only costs you 50 bucks, it's a lot better than 680 bucks, you know, mailing them from here. And yeah. hoping they get there and yeah, yeah. get through customs and all that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, <clears throat> also, I think I have been pretty sure I've been uh, making CDs, uh, you know, that are lighter. Mm -hmm. Oh, you yeah. Know, you, you want to use the more... DigiPack. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. The DigiPack. So. Yeah, those are those ones in the plastic <laughs> thing. They, they weigh a lot of they weigh a lot. So. <laughs> and they're old, man. Do you do vinyl, Kathy? I have not done vinyl. I don't I don't know. I don't feel confident that my audience will buy vinyl. You know, maybe I did a record. Well, we're, we're finishing up a record right now. We're just waiting on one solo uh from hubert laws actually oh great so we're just waiting on that one solo and then then it'll be done with john left which he and i oh fantastic it's a project it's really nice not a no net mm -hmm. i love very him. interesting I, I love john's playing yeah he's great he's and great only time i've ever met hubert is at pat kelly's party that john left which was there and uh yeah you know, it was, it was and, and sat in with Hubert and, you know, I've got all those old CTI records of his and I love him. He He's started still, talking to my son, beautiful. Hubert Laws, just talking to my son. And they had like this one hour conversation. And then he came to me and he goes, man, your son is a really bright kid. You know, he's got huh. a future. He's got a, and um, I go, wow, <laughs> that's good to hear. <laughs> so, wow, that's Hubert, pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can't wait to hear your new record. Thank you. You know what but you that, might that do was... is you, you, you have a mailing list, right? I do have a mailing list. I'll put you on my mailing list. Put, put me on it. And, and, and also get Survey Monkey to, uh, you can you can migrate all the names of your mailing list to Survey Monkey and then say, I have, you know, this, take this five minute, this one minute survey. Do you buy vinyl? Do you have a turntable? Do you buy vinyl? And where do you live? And you could give them options like North America, South America, Asia, Europe. Yeah. And, are and you selling vinyl? Hmm? Are you selling vinyl? Yeah, I do. Yeah. And I, I make a limited run of 500, but you can sell it for 30 bucks. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, which is incredible. So yeah, <laughs> my, my latest album, Riverboat Sky, is on vinyl. And uh, yeah, it's selling. And it sells great at the gigs, too. It's amazing. Because it's amazing. Those, yeah. There are those collectors, you know. Yeah, I know. Um, Anthony like Nelson. <laughs> oh, there you go. I got a lot. Yeah. Of yeah so. Oh, your my husband has twelve thousand uh, records and wow. CDs and forty fives. Are they on campus there? Yeah, they're um, in the other room. They're that's just inside. Outside, he has like five thousand or so that he's. He keeps trying to sell, you know, mm -hmm. interestingly, there's, uh, it's interesting because people, you know, are buying vinyl, but on like, um, what is it? The, uh, the, what's the selling forum, um, but, 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 but CD baby or something or no, uh, no, you know, for your own personal stuff. Um, oh, oh, eBay, eBay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's, it's not. It's not, uh, they're not going like hotcakes. And he has a lot of really cool vinyl, some sealed. And mm -hmm. and I, maybe he's just not reaching the right people. But how can you not reach the right people on eBay? I know. You know? That's weird. Cause yeah, it's, it's very weird. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Um, 
Oh, Maybe Scott. in swap meet time. <laughs> no kidding. Scott Hustis, great guitar player. He said he, he wanted to do vinyl, but it takes a long time. Yeah. The good vinyl pressing plants are few and the waiting list is long. Yeah, I found a plant down in Texas, down in um, Dallas. Mm. Oh. And the, the record before this that I did vinyl was out of England. And, oh. um, and they do the whole uh, 1080p or the, 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 the certain, there's a certain vinyl weight. Yeah. But, and that appeals to certain collectors, the, the, the high audiophile crowd, you know, even oh. though the sound between regular vinyl and the expensive vinyl, the thicker vinyl, no different. So, but they just want that, you know. So I know Anthony Wilson is uh, he just made a record and he's only putting it out on vinyl. Oh, good for him. And yeah. so and I've, I've I'll heard... have to have it. I love that guy. Me too. That guy's so special, man. He's just deep. Yeah, he's he's wonderful. He's going to yeah. be playing at Sam first in a month or something. OK, yeah, I'll check him out. Yeah, he's he's is he still doing Irene Crawl? I mean, I not mean, Irene Crawl. Uh, Diana Crawl. I think he is, yeah. And have you have you heard him since he moved into the singing and the kind of blues style? No. I gotta check him He's out. He kind of uh, visited his roots, mm -hmm. you know, his dad's roots, yeah. right? Gerald Wilson, yeah. and um, and then several years back, he started writing more and started singing, and. It's it reminds me of like um, old blues guys, you mm -hmm. know, and he's a really, really good writer, very thoughtful. Mm -hmm. The songs are cool. And then his playing is. Yeah, I've got a couple of his CDs for sure. I love the guy. He's great. Yeah. You know, I heard this weekend um, and I've heard him before, but I but once again, I was impressed was. Um, <clears throat> Gosh, what was his name? <laughs> Sorry. I mean, suddenly he was playing a Kulak's Woodshed with um, a sax player <clears throat> named um, Jeff Pfeiffer, Andy Waddell. Oh, I don't know him. Good player. You should listen to him. You would really like him. He's Great. really good. Wow. Yeah. And he's, it's, he's that kind of guitar player. He... He can use space and, you know, tasteful nice. things and then go into crazy, crazy guitar crazy. licks. You know, I mean, he's super good. Andy Waddell. Yeah. Oh, wow. nice. I'll check him out. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You know, there's so many great players. It's such a pleasure to uh, just discover new people like that <laughs> you know? and, then, and, then, and then learn from them and, 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 like you said, just put it in your DNA. You know? Yeah. <laughs> My recent discovery, I just finished a book um, the, the called, you know, it was the life story of Leon Russell. And I'm a huge fan, oh. right? And the book is called Master of Space and Time. And uh, it's his whole life, oh. right? So these huh. early days with the Wrecking Crew and all that morph into, he's got his own studio on Sky Hill Drive. And the, the Tulsa, Oklahoma crowd that kind of gathers there and moves out and moves in with him and everything uh, eventually include people like Delaney and Bonnie, right? And um, the book will say, you know, this particular song by Delaney and Bonnie has some of the most amazing Leon playing. So, and so I've been buying some of their records. I, I mean, buying the CDs, I just want to own it. It's so strong. Huh. And one one of these records is called um, Except No Substitute by Delaney and Bonnie. And it is some of the greatest R&B stuff. And Delaney was an amazing vocalist. I mean, just incredible. And Bonnie's kind of got a scratchy voice, but she's great. You know, <laughs> she sings Do Right Woman and stuff on that record. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But um, you see, for me, like uh, in those early 70s when that morphed into Derek and the Dominoes, you know, Clapton kind of stole their whole band and Clapton was playing with Delaney and Bonnie and he, he, huh. he steals their band. And then George Harrison starts playing with them on their European tour with, huh. and uh, so you, you, you see these kind of, then Leon's got the shelter people, those kind of records and um, some of his first records with um, a song for you. It's all those guys. And so, I've been really fascinated by the through line between 
you know, Delaney and Bonnie and Leon Russell and Eric Clapton and D D Derek and the Dominoes yeah. and Clapton's first record is all that stuff. And you can see he's just trying to sing like Delaney. Huh. He's really trying to get that that uh, almost southern. It, it it's it's interesting because a lot of it's gospel music, but it's they don't say it's gospel. They call it Pentecostal. So it's not coming from a black thing as much as this maybe a white thing. I don't know. The Okies, Oklahoma people and Texas people. It's really cool, man. I've been really, really digging it. So interesting. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't listened to them for all of those I guys. Well, I didn't them. really buy their records back in the day. I knew of them, but I didn't, I didn't check them out so much. So yeah, I can see my computer's about to battery die. So uh -oh. um, I should probably get rolling here. We've got these contractors and workers in the backyard putting in new drainage. And uh, I, I, I need to go out and make sure the drains are going in the right places every once in a while. So, uh, anyway. Okay, Carl, thanks yeah. for being on. Loving it, man. So, and I do, I do want to hang with you. You know, I'm going to call you and say, let's get together for coffee or something. Let's or do tea. it. Yeah, let's do it. Either one. Yeah, yeah. So, and okay. I want to, uh, yeah. What are you going to play again around town? Well, let's see. I just played with the Nonette actually last week, and that, that was really good. I think I, I'm, I'm not sure I'm even playing in April because. Well, I'm out I'm of town ready. until the middle of May. Yeah, I'm just getting ready for. Um, for uh, I'm getting ready for Japan and, oh, wow. and, um, and Korea. And I. I'm finishing up records too. I'm actually finishing up my 18th CD. Fantastic. Wow. <laughs> kind of like you. Yeah, you and, and me on the same boat. Wow. Yeah, so I'm doing that and uh I've been um I've been helping my my ex-brother-in-law uh with health stuff. Oh, so, man. um yeah, so that's what yeah. I'm doing right now yeah, and yeah, just yeah. working on well, So if I look for you if I look get on your mailing list and see where you are like say in August September you'll be back right Oh yeah and actually and in September I'm going to Norway but um hopefully I mean I can I usually do not go like a month without playing a few times Yeah good for you But I just haven't I feel like I have enough to do right now so I'm just going to yeah. concentrate on that stuff on your plate Yep yeah. Great, great. Well, all the best to you, and thanks so much for having me. Thank this you, Carl. Fun, it's, so. it's really fun, really nice, and I just going to tell people next Monday. I'm I'm only doing Mondays now. I you know, you're number five hundred and seventy four. Damn, that's amazing. <laughs> so number five hundred and seventy five next Monday is a really great uh, Emmy winning or Grammy winning. Um, engineer and he's also a musician alfonso Rod rodinas and oh, wow. um anyway he's going to be on he's really a cool guy so next great. monday that's who's on great i'll that's tune it. in so okay all right see you later kathy take care thanks carl okay